Is TBS still the best? Uh, in control links, I, I'm really excited to see what TBS comes out with next. So a lot of the time, TBS leads the field. And I think it's safe to say that right now, in control links, TBS is not leading the field. Okay? Crossfire, ELRS 900 megahertz, in terms of pure range and link performance, ELRS 900 megahertz and ELRS 2.4 gigahertz are doing things that Crossfire just doesn't do. Now, Crossfire fans will point to the multitude of things that Crossfire does that ELRS doesn't do, and they're not wrong. Things like over-the-air firmware updates, easy, simple, just press a button binding, and so forth. Um, but in terms of like link performance, which I think is the thing you have to look at, uh, ELRS is getting a lot done. Uh, but the other thing to keep in mind is that TBS often leads the field, but when TBS doesn't lead the field, they come back and leapfrog the field. So I don't know what TBS is working on now. I presume that they're looking at ExpressLRS and going, oh, oh, you guys, we can do so much better. And, and that whatever they come out with, whenever they come out with it, will be really impressive. At this time, though, in terms of control link, uh, performance, despite the fact that there are many people who still just are like, Crossfire's never done me wrong. Absolutely. It's the old standby, but it's the old standby, which doesn't mean that it's leading, right? That means it's the old standby. Um, I, I think that that it, it might change in the future, because TBS doesn't like to not be in front, and uh, they're extremely smart and extremely capable. And um, so, uh, in terms of uh, controllers, the TBS Tango 2 and the Mambo, I'm not gigantic fans. The Tango 2 is compact and capable, but it runs Crossfire. And if you put Express LRS on it, you, you know, then it's not as compact anymore. So, I think in terms of controllers, again, it's been a while since they released a controller. And whatever they're working on now, which I presume they are, I was probably going to be pretty freaking impressive. But it's not out today. Um, I'm super impressed with some of their flight controllers and ESCs, which is, you know, everybody thinks of Crossfire and the Unify. The Unify DP, an excellent video transmitter. That's a good one. There's a lot of good video transmitters out there, though. Is it leading? I don't know. Where's the T Unify DP? TBS micro battery charger. Does that still exist? They still sell that? Oh my goodness gracious, look at that. Is this the same one that they used to sell years ago? Yeah, because it doesn't have BT 2.0. Oh my God, I can't believe they still sell this. They can't still be manufacturing this. It has to just be like in stock since forever. Uh, anyway, uh, shop. Electronics, flight controllers, ESCs. Like, for example, um, the TBS Lucid 8S ESC, $60 for an 8S 4-in-1 ESC. Hell yeah. And it's made by TBS. So, like, you can trust that it's not, like, a piece of shit. Um, want, a, want a 12S ESC? TBS Lucid 12S 90-amp ESC. Having trouble getting APD ESCs for your Cinelifter build? Hey, TBS Lucid 12S. 90 amp ESC. 50 bucks. Good price. Runs presumably AM32. Yeah, AM32. Um, yeah. So uh, that, that flight controller, TBS H, uh, Lucid H7. Really impressive flight controller. Really reasonable price. I think this is a case where, where you can argue that they are definitely leading um, in terms of performance and in terms of price. We have reached a plateau in RC Link technology. Uh, uh, interesting. Um, I mean, LoRa is that plateau, if anything. And by that, 
uh, mar by that st standard, some would argue that Crossfire was the plateau. But ExpressLRS demonstrated that there was a lot of room to improve on the performance of Crossfire. Um, the main thing that ExpressLRS did was design their packet format to be as compact and efficient as they could, cutting out some features, to be fair, um, so that for a given bit rate, they could get a higher packet rate, or for a given packet rate, they could get a lower bit rate and therefore better signal-to-noise ratio, better sensitivity, and better range. Um, so is there room to do that again? Is there room to, to take the underlying LoRa technology, which I think is, is, is sort of a, definitely like a game changer, and we're going to be stuck with LoRa for a while because the ability to like do better, it's, it's so good and such a step forward that the ability to like do that again, I'm not saying it can't be done, but I'm saying it, it, it's difficult. Um, I, I don't know I what technology out there is to LoRa what Laura was to the stuff that came before it. Go ahead, Blinty. Yeah, I would just say that I think part of it was like, you know, we were using Laura, but just with the 900 megahertz chip that TBS had decided to use, right? Mm -hmm. So ExpressLRS was kind of just a way to use available technology the best for FPV, right? They were yeah. able to take Semtech chips off the shelf and use them more, better, give them manufacturers, produce something that could have all these extra features. And like you said, remove some, but now there's branches that add those things. And um, I think about this question, I think like, I think it's pretty intelligent because, like, it feels like, you know, TBS was, like, sort of made a camp on the mountain, right? Mm -hmm. And, like, mm -hmm. Express LRS sort of built a little town on the mountain. Mm -hmm. And now we have all the features on the mountain. And, and we're all – so I, I sort of don't see where we can go up because I don't personally know about, you know, maybe Qualcomm makes something or maybe there's some other, like, like link technology that we don't know about. But it seems like LoRa, FLRC, FSK are the two main options. We're running at the fastest and slowest rates. We have full options. We have the mm -hmm. small as pack as possible for what we're trying to carry. Mm -hmm. it, it, I don't know. It feels like we're sort of hitting like a plateau of like you could yeah. see, if, if you were if you I, what I'm trying to say is years back you could probably see the future. You could see that Semtech offered a 2.4 chip. I'm sure TBS knew about that back then, right? Yeah, and they yeah. were considering like well, that using was, it and all that those was, kind of things. That right? was Tracer. Well, right, but they right? hadn't built Tracer yet. Tracer yeah, was yeah. coming, right? Yeah. So that's sort of where I'm. I think we could see that before, but now I'm not sure what we see. Yeah. Maybe Captain Breyer, some of the other people would have a different answer. Well, the other thing, the other thing to keep in mind is that you know, control link technology, uh, how good does it need to be? And that's an argument. You could argue, have we reached a plateau in terms of the technology? And then some people will say, well, but a new technology will come. And but then, how much better will it get? Because we currently have. I'm not going to say we have as much range and penetration as we could possibly want, but we're 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 not that far off. Like, I can't remember the last time I fail safe my control link. It's always the video link that gives out first these days, right? <laughs> like, so if your control link is is always outranging your video by a significant margin. Then, then what do you want? What more do you want from your control link? And there are people out there who will say, I want a more sophisticated control link, right? So they want to have, right now, ExpressLRS has sort of pared the protocol down to the bare bones to get the lowest possible latency. And they're like, well, I want some of that functionality back. I want a high, high bandwidth, high fat Mavlink type control link where I can do all kinds of extra stuff. I'm like, okay, well, you can, you can make that argument. Um, I want the ability to have an IP, a TCP IP, you know, uh, Raspberry Pi doing a TCP IP connection back to the ground station to do all kinds of stuff that I can't do with the traditional control link. And it's like, okay, well, now you're entering. It's not a traditional RC control link at that point. It's something else. Um, and then you start to, you know, you said not have the latency. But in terms of an, a traditional RC control link, I think we have reached a plateau because the performance of the system is so good that it is more than most many people want, at which point they don't really care about trying to push it to go further, you know? Um, yeah. So...